Hi, this is Marcus Giuliano, a.k.a. the Healthy Chef Dude. I'm a chef on a mission. I've got a lot of problems with the way food is coming into restaurants, and I really have a problem with the way the companies are misleading us to buy food and, and what's happening. So I'm here to educate, 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 educate. Now, I've always talked about farmed salmon not being an option really at all. And I've always talked about there's certain exceptions, because a lot of people say, oh, all farmed fish is no good. That's wrong. There are certain farms in certain industries and in certain species of fish that are doing phenomenal jobs. They're not only are they, are they meeting um, eco-friendly guidelines, but some of them are exceeding these uh, eco-friendly guidelines. And you just you never know because you have to do your research. It's very crucial to do research. The, first of all, the word organic in farmed fish and farmed salmon, you see organic salmon, that means nothing. Zip, zero, zilch. It is a self-regulated term. So if you're going to buy organic salmon at a sushi restaurant, or if you're a chef buying organic salmon from a vendor, there's really nothing special about that, except they might do a couple more things where they think they're being more eco-friendly and putting saying, well, this is organic. Really, it's organic style based upon their own interpretations. There's no set definition. And I have a problem with organic, too, because organic standards are made to really help the big companies push products through that typically aren't really organic, so it's a whole other blog topic right there. But today I want to talk about farmed salmon. Farmed salmon, you know, I, it's very, 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 very seldom does there, is there a farmed salmon that actually pops up and says, wow, this is something we can actually support. Now here are the issues with salmon farming. Salmon farming, they'll put a million fish in the size of two football fields, and they're op their pens that are sitting out in the, the open top pens that are sitting out in the ocean that are floating in bays. Two side, two football fields, a million fish. It's a feedlot for fish. You ever seen the, the pictures of, of cattle in those feedlots and they're jam packed in, they can't move? That's what's happening with the salmon, okay? The salmon gets sea lice because they're so packed, they get a lot of disease and, and bacteria and all that. Sea lice is one of the most common things to actually escape into the bays and contaminate the real wild salmon. Now, Farm salmon, Atlantic Atlantic salmon, farm salmon, same thing. When I use say Atlantic and farm, it's the same thing. You use those interchangeably. Wild Atlantic salmon is a totally different thing. But Atlantic salmon and farm salmon, that's what they're doing. Typically, when you buy farm salmon, it is Atlantic salmon. They are doing farmed kings and cohos and a few other things, but really 90 plus percent of the market is farmed Atlantic salmon. So now you have sea lice getting into the ocean, infecting the wild salmon. Now and here's the tricky part. This farm salmon doesn't reproduce. It's genetically unfit to reproduce. So if the salmon escapes, which happens all the time, they get holes get in the net and it escapes, you have a, a wild salmon that's in this crucial ecosystem in being infiltrated from farmed salmon that is now competing for the same food source. The farm salmon will never ever reproduce. It's going to spread bacteria into the wild. There's actually statistics out there that are saying that the Atlantic wild salmon has been diminishing because of farming, because the farming is bad news for the sea lice, the bacteria that gets out, and the fish get out, and it's actually detrimenting the little stock that's actually left of farm, of wild Atlantic salmon. So people think, well, I'm eating farm, I'm saving the wild. That's not true in all cases. So most salmon, open air, pen, open pen, out in the ocean, not good news. The pollution that comes out of these salmon farms are astronomical. Some of these salmon farms produce pound for pound the same uh, pollution, environmental pollution, um, fecal matter, fecal matter as a village or city the size of 10,000 people. Imagine taking 10,000 people, the whole village, putting them in two football fields in the ocean and dumping that fecal matter into the ocean every single day. That's what's happening with farmed salmon. Farmed salmon is so detrimental to the wild salmon, to the environment, and because of all this, the salmon are sick, more hormones, more antibiotics, antibiotics really, and it's just a constant stream right in the food. Because the salmon do not get to, get to express themselves in the wild, they need to be, they need to give or express themselves with a natural diet. Their, their flesh has to be dyed. It's a grayish color, so they have to put food coloring into the food to get the flesh that, that, that carrot looking color. But now here's the good news. There is, I've known about some, some small farms in and out of the last 10 years that are doing inland farm salmon, where it's actually inland, not out on the ocean, inland contained water system, which means the 
whatever whatever their their the waste they're producing is contained within. It, the water can be filtered, reused, and put back into the farm. There's a farm that just popped up called Sweet Spring in Washington State. Sweet Spring uh, Coho, it's freshwater coho farm. They are producing freshwater coho salmon in the most sustainable manner. In fact, so sustainable that Monterey Bay Aquarium gives them top nods on their uh, seafood watch and sustainability list. And so did another um, place, I don't see it right now on the, on the internet here, uh, from Canada, the Seafood Alliance Store, they gave it top nods as well. They're, I forgot what they're producing, and of course they're not producing enough you know, to, to get out into the big cities here. But they are producing this, it is out there. Now, 10 years ago I had an inland farm called Salmon that was pretty awesome stuff, same concept. Now there are other fish farms that are doing the same exact thing, like Barramundi, the Australis band Barramundi, which is in western Massachusetts, or in Massachusetts. They're doing this inland farm salmon, very purifying the water, very clean, very eco-friendly, and again, they have top nods for Monterey Bay Aquarium Seafood Watch. So today's lesson is you cannot, you can't lump everybody together, and I'm big on this, because you really can't lump everybody together. All organics aren't good, all farm salmon aren't bad. The majority of them are, yes, all farmed fish are not bad. Farm sh all farm shrimp are not bad. So you really have to understand it takes a lot of research. You have to look at these things and analyze each one. And as a chef, chefs really have to really ask questions to their vendor. Two weeks ago I ordered halibut. I, I was very insistent that it was Alaskan halibut. Oh yes, yes, yes. The stuff came in. I really didn't think it was Alaskan halibut. It was so small. It was just, I was like, ugh. You know, and I ended up sending the, the fish back. I really wasn't happy with it. Um, so as a chef you really have to be on top of it and understand if you call a seafood company and a seafood company says Marcus I have um, Columbia River salmon okay now we're talking origin if they say Marcus I have ocean caught troll salmon from um, Resurrection Bay in Alaska the fish vendor has gone through that much time to actually segregate out instead of just lumping together it's like wine you read a bottle of wine a French bottle of wine the more information they give you the better the wine is typically because you start with the county or the region you work down to the village you work to the producer and then you work to the actual single vineyard same thing with fish the way it was caught where it was caught you know um, the exact area you know so instead of just saying Pacific salmon now all of a sudden we're saying Alaskan salmon instead of saying Alaskan salmon we're saying Resurrection Bay salmon instead of saying Resurrection Bay salmon we're saying troll caught Resurrection based salmon. See how that goes? The more information you get, typically the higher quality. If a vendor's taking the time to to know all this information, chances are that vendor's on top of it. If the chef knows it in a restaurant, chances are that chef has gone the extra step. And these are the people that we want to support. The people that are actually asking the questions and, and knowing what they're serving and, and knowing what they're buying and knowing what they're selling. It's very, very important. Today's lesson. The good farm salmon, there's good in some farm salmon apparently, Sweet sweet Springs, um, if anybody ha has any information or can try it, I, I suggest you go out there, give them a shot, and I'm really excited to, to try this, so I haven't had farmed uh, inland coho salmon in probably 10 years, like I said, and I'm really excited about this. So, hope this helps you with your seafood selections, ask questions when you go out to eat, if you're a chef, ask questions when you're buying, very, very important, follow the seasons, you are what you eat. HealthyChefDude.com, HealthyChefDude.blogspot.com. Follow me on Twitter, same, same name.